Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, Halloween is right around the corner, and I'm sure we all have those little ones in grades kindergarten through third grade who want to be police officers. You guys know them? Yeah. We're going to see them. Um, but their eyes light up when they see a police officer wanting to get um, a, a wave, a high five, or to start a conversation. But by fifth grade, the number of students who want to interact with police officers decreases. And this only continues to decrease as they get older. So what changes? I teach a diverse group of students and it seems that we can't go a day without seeing a video of a police officer targeting, harassing, or inflicting violence upon somebody that looks like them. Students are angry, they're hurt, and they want to do something to stop it. Police reform has always been a topic for communities of color, but with the recent video capturing of injustices inflicted on people of color by the police, it seems that police reform is demanded by most Americans. Again, what changed? As we learn the history of development of policing, we learn that police departments were created to manage riots and other social disorders. We now see police officers resembling military personnel. We see videos of police officers killing innocent people. But we also meet kind and friendly police officers. Understanding policing in our country is complex, but it's necessary if we want to discuss reform. So I teach fourth and fifth grade English language arts and social studies at McClellan Elementary. It's located in the neighborhood of Bridgeport, just south of the city. El McClellan Elementary is very diverse, especially for Chicago public schools. With diversity comes many different perspectives. These are our fifth graders, all 29 of them, and they have a voice and I want them to keep using it. Living in Chicago, we experience how police brutality can affect a city. In 2014, 17-year-old Laquan McDonald was shot 16 times by a police officer. Last school year, we streamed the trial of Jason Van Dyke, the officer who murdered him, and we celebrated in his conviction, but we weren't happy because at the end of the day, it was another African-American who was murdered by the police. We all know that police brutality is not unique to Chicago. Like the rest of our nation, our, our police force in Chicago, the CPD, has numerous incidents where people of color have been targeted, harassed, assaulted, tortured, brutalized by police officers. For instance, in 1970s through the 1990s, Chicago Police Commander John Birch tortured over 100 African American boys in two false confessions. In 2015, um, Chicago became the first city in the United States that created a reparations fund for the victims of police torture due to the trauma that John Burge inflicted. Um, he was not the first police officer in Chicago to inflict torture and or excessive force on people of color and our data shows that we have not found a solution to this problem. Examining the history of our policing in our country and our city will help us understand hein this heinous reality and offer insight into how we can improve our relationships amongst police and members of the community. So this is an integrated unit for social studies and language arts. In this unit, we will explore themes such as racial disparities, police militarization, police brutality, restorative practices, empathy, and healing from trauma. We will explore essential questions like, what is the role of police? What role did laws play in the militarization of police? What is police brutality? And how can citizens rebuild communities after trauma? We will explore these questions through activities such as hypothetical situations and debates, independent journaling and the use of restorative practices um, like talking circles and peace circles. There are two culminating activities. In the first, students will design their ideal police department. They will create rules, laws, training, daily routines and requirements for police officers. Students will write an essay explaining all of their choices. We will then invite local police officers into our classroom for students to share um, their idea police office, um, ideal police department in hopes to start a conversation. We hope uh, to heal relationships and we hope to start new relationships with our local police departments. 
We also hope that the CPD will reciprocate our invitation and invite us into their workspace um, and our relationship can forge. The second culminating activities are, is for students to create a safe place in either our school or the classroom where students can heal from past trauma. Students will enact change, will be change agents by acknowledging the harm that has been inflicted upon our school community involving the police. They will create a space where students can heal through empowerment. Students will begin by creating a mission statement for our space. Then students will be divided into teams. Each team will have a specific role. One group might be writing a proposal to our principal, one in charge of the design of the space, one will be in charge of advertising our space, and fundraising. Finally, another will create expectations for the space. Once each team has completed their part, students will come together to create a safe place for healing. So where do we start? We start with acknowledging our biases. Um, we identified how we felt with police officers and what experiences led us to feel that way. Um, here are some student examples. In the middle, you'll see their point of view and then the evidence is in the surrounding circles. Some students see the police as helpful to their community while others see them as problematic. Some students are caught in between. So this is where we're at right now in our unit. Um, we're at our talking circle. Before we went on strike, we had our first talking circle. The talking circle, the purpose of a talking circle is to create a safe, non-judgmental environment where each participant has the opportunity to contribute to the discussion. So before we met in our talk talking circle, we came up with talking circle norms. And I recommend that you do that if you're gonna have talking circles. Um, our norms included confidentiality, what happens in the talking circle stays in the talking circle. Um, you can only talk when you have the talking piece. We have a stuffed monkey that they love and we pass that around. 
Listen to all classmates, and most importantly, respect peers' voice because all of our opinions are valid because they came from experiences. Students shared their experience that they had with police officers, and then they shared their point of view. Um, even students who had different point of views than another student, you would hear them snapping uh, when their classmates were talking. That meant that they agreed. So even if they didn't share that same experience, they could understand what that student was going through. And it was really powerful to see how they supported each other um, with respecting them and then sharing in their commonalities. So their assignment the day before we went on strike was to write and reflect on our first talking circle and what did they take away from it. So I'm eager to get back to school and see how the talking circle impacted them because I know how it impacted me. And then our next steps, um, we're gonna then dive into what is the role of police and students will begin to create their idea police department. Then we're gonna be examining what is brutality. Is brutality only excessive force or is brutality verbal? Is it um, over surveillance? Is it harassment? Um, we're gonna look at the role that police militarization and laws had in police brutality and we're gonna also look at current events. Um, from there, we're gonna see how can we heal from trauma and this is where students are gonna be creating a safe place either in the classroom or in our school so other students can heal from trauma. Thank you.